Good morning. It's so great to see you all. My name is Barbara Přihodová. I am the curator of PQ Talks, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you on the day three of PQ Talks. Um, today, we are dedicating our program to costume. Very exciting, very exciting. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm excited myself. Um, we have several wonderful panels lined up for, day, for today, and we're starting with critical costume connections. So without further ado, let me welcome our first speakers. Good morning. I, yeah, it works. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we start with critical costume connections. Um, uh, I, I feel uh, very proud, very happy that we are starting the day. I think what uh, best way uh, to start um, than uh, talking about connecting with costume and through costume. Uh, I'm Sofia Pantovaki. Um, there are many good friends and colleagues here. Uh, we know each other already, however, I, I will also just briefly say I'm a scenographer and costume designer from Greece, based in Finland, where I am also professor of costume design at Aalto University. And I'm also chair of the Critical Costume Network, uh, which is what we will be talking about uh, today. I will start and then um, my colleagues uh, and guests uh, will contribute to the discussion particularly in relation to the latest work we have been doing. Um, uh, I, uh, Critical Costume has been a partner with the PQ already in PQ 15 and PQ 19. And each of the previous times, we had topics. We had specific topics. So in 2015, we had a talk in relation to the Tribes project, if you remember. We also had a talk about costume cultures. In 2019, we had another talk which was about costume as scenography, the connections between costume and space. Maybe some of you were there. And this time, we thought that um, it could be a great chance to talk about critical costume itself as an idea, as a network, and also realizing that this year marks the first decade of critical costume. So we have been active for 10 years. And it's a great opportunity. <laughs> so um, I, I will be later joined by my lovely friend and colleague, Rosani Muniz from Brazil. Um, who has been also co-convener of the Critical Costume 2022 event, and two of the designers, um, Marwa Auda from um, Oystad uh, Egypt Center and Istok Hrga, sorry Istok, I always, uh, from Slovenia, uh, also working um, in um, Spain. So, a few words about Critical Costume, um, especially for those of you who haven't uh, been with us so much. Uh, one of the aims of today's talk is to expand our network, to make new connections. So, we hope this will work. Um, Critical Costume was originally launched as a one-off uh, conference in 2013. It was January 2013. And that first conference was at Edge Hill University in the UK. And it was organized by my colleagues, Rachel Han, whom many of you um, I also know, and Sid Selbeh, a scenographer. Uh, and the topic was to words of vocabulary of scenographic bodies. What is interesting is that the reason why they did a conference was that they were trying to build a module so a pedagogical module for their university on costume design. And back at that time, uh, there was very little about costume. Few books, much less. There were only these books of how to design costumes, the very basics. But they wanted to go deeper, deeper into analyzing what costume can be, what it can do, how we can approach it. Uh, also through the eyes of the designers, not only through the eyes, for example, of a historian. 
and to support their um, pedagogical project, they decided to make a small conference for a couple of days. It was about 50 people, and uh, some of them were guests, um, colleagues they, they, they knew already. And it was a very successful event because everybody had an urge to talk about costume and to share about costume. And the first event was already connecting uh, theory and practice. And since we're talking about connections, I, I want to say that all of the events, as you will see since then, have always connected theory and practice. So there have always been designers. It's not an academic conference where designers, you know, feel uh, on the side. No, this is very much costume-centered in all ways. Um, uh, the, the first event also had um, an exhibition in the space, which was then edited by Rachel, and it has, sorry, and it has an online presence. Maybe I show this first. So if you go to the Critical Costume website, you have a chance um, uh, also now to, to have a look at the exhibition with all the names of the designers. At the end of that event, um, Rachel and Sitzel wanted to somehow document the ideas that came, um, that were discussed at the conference and um, collaborated with Scene, which is a journal on scenography and performance design more broadly. And there was a double special issue, uh, which was called On Critical Costume and edited by them, and where you can still find today um, some of the work presented there. What happened right after that, or actually before the event, was that at the same time I was in Helsinki in Finland and I wanted to do a conference <laughs> around the same time that they announced this one. And I said, okay, let's not, this is a great moment. I think it has been very timely for the costume community to open um, the discussion more widely and also more in depth about costume. And since that time, um, our community has grown. So as the moment was so timely, I first of all joined them for their event and then immediately said, we have to continue and we have to expand this. And that's what happened. So the three of us decided to m build something that could have a continuation and something that could become more international, so beyond the UK, to, to, to move on. And that's how we launched um, a website that is, has been developed since then and turned the whole idea of critical costume into a wider network. Why critical costume? Well, Rachel says that the original idea came from the book on critical architecture, and it is mainly a way to say that we can negotiate, debate, challenge, question many of the things that come into the fore with costume and for costume, such as stereotypes. You know, it's just one of the examples. So further on from 2013, we decided to do the next event uh, in Helsinki, where I hosted and convened the Critical Costume 2015 uh, at Aalto University with the question and theme, what does it mean to study costume in the 21st century? We uh, organized this um, as part of a costume methodologies research project, a four-year project, which was about methods and approaches on costume. And that's why the theme was very much about how do we research costume, practice-based ways of looking at costume and, and developing. And there was again an exhibition which we prepared together with Jorge Sandoval, um, my uh, Mexican colleague based in London. Everything is very international. And at the end of that event, some other new thing happened, which I think has been another fortunate and timely moment. We created a journal. We means the community again, but uh, as um, you might know, this is a journal uh, launched by uh, Donatella Barbieri and myself in the beginning with Kate Dorney and later on with Sue Osmond, Studies in Costume and Performance. And it, uh, it was another project that had been in discussion for many, many years. 
and uh, which was um, um, agreed with, a, with an independent publisher a few years before Critical Costume, and it was kind of waiting. So the Critical Costume event in 2015 um, was again an opportunity to um, bring costume to the fore as, uh, in terms of scholarship. So uh, the journal was launched with materials from the second Critical Costume event. If you're interested in, in that, we also have a few postcards for you who, who can have a look at uh, the website and everything. Um, this, is also, um, this also confirms how uh, things move on and somehow costume scholarship has emancipated step by step. And of course there are other events, international events where costume is included, such as IFTR and the Sonography Working Group, independent conferences, conferences on fashion, which often have uh, a panel on costume uh, and so on. And of course the OISAT subcommission, which also foregrounds costume practice. But somehow critical costume, I believe, has um, put um, somehow uh, costume in the spotlight <laughs> in all ways. Um, in the 2015 um, event, there was also an exhibition. Uh, this is a, p a screenshot from the website where you can see uh, the designers' names. The specific exhibition was only on site, but we hope to add, with the designer's permission, some more material on the website for you to see. And um, it focused on materialities and also on methods and um, practice-led approaches for the research on costume. And what happened next was that we realized that by having the events every two years, in 2013 and 2015, we were coinciding either with the PQ or with World Stage Design, which is another big event of Oystad. And to avoid that clash, we moved. <laughs> so we, we moved to 2018, and now we follow a different sequence of the years. And when we did the move, uh, there was a small gap, and during that year, uh, one of the members of the Critical Costume Steering Group, Professor Fausto Viana from Brazil, uh, did a special issue um, uh, with me and with some other colleagues on costume in times of war and guerrillas, in, as part of the Brazilian journal Dobras. So 2018 was what came next, and um, we went back to the UK, um, where um, Rachel Han hosted one more event, and because Rachel Hand hosted for the second time, we started discussing on how we can take this to um, the wider community and how can we make critical costume uh, available to other countries, and uh, we always look for hosts, and we hope that there will be more and more hosts, universities or associations in the future. The one in 18 uh, was themed around the topic of costume ethics and uh, again included an exhibition curated by El Slade and Meng Cunningham from the University of Surrey. Um, the topic was so deep, important, but at the same time touched on so many ethical issues around costume, uh, around collaboration, uh, around how we make performance, how we make choices, that the materials resulted in quite a rich archive of texts and scholarship. And th in this case, we, we made a double issue, uh, or actually two, two, a whole volume, two issues of the journal Studies in Costume and Performance on costume ethics, which we co-edited with Donatella. Some of these texts are available for free, um, the occasional uh, text, but unfortunately, most of the journal is, um, has to be purchased through membership, but hopefully you might ask your libraries if you come from a university. And the Critical Costume 2018 exhibition uh, was um, in place around the same topic, and again we have at the website a list of names, about 20 exhibitors. Uh, 24 designers uh, on site at the University of Surrey. And again, these two events, which were only on site, are going to hopefully soon have more materials online. Um, and what happened next, sorry, I skipped this, 
is that we had plans to go to Norway. So now we were starting to go uh, uh, to, to other places, other countries, still in Europe, but hopefully soon out of Europe as well. And in 2020, um, our colleagues from um, uh, Oslo National Academy of the Arts and especially Professor Kristina Lindgren, in collaboration and together with Soja Lotker, whom you might know from as a previous uh, former PQ artistic director, they uh, proposed, they offered to host Critical Costume in 2020 as part of their um, costume agency artistic research project. Um, this to me shows the many connections um, and uh, if you're here until later today, you will be able to um, attend the last talk of the day, which is about costume agency. Since, since then, the, co the project has uh, been completed and they will present results. Um, well, what happened in between was that COVID came, the pandemic. The pandemic came in March, the conference was going to be in August, so it was very, very tight and uh, everyone's attention turned into very quickly organizing a conference online. If you consider the challenges, it was one of the first ones we had to, to react and uh, Christina and Sodja and their team were very fast in responding to that. So everything happened online and an exhibition was curated by a visual artist um, Yuka Oyama um, and since the event um, was planned on site with a certain uh, frame, we also made a ch they also made a change to um, turn all the attention and the budget on creating something else. Instead of catering, we made, they made a website. I say we because it's all the costume, critical costume community, but this is their project. So, the specific 2020 event has a dedicated website uh, as part of the costume agency project, and which, you, which looks like this. These are some print screens from um, online. So you, there's an introduction to both the event and the online exhibition. And what is, I believe, amazing, and this is very important for us to consider for the future, is that all the presentations of the specific event, the 2020 event, were recorded pre-recorded by the speakers themselves, and they are available online. So you can look at all these names, a very, very rich archive of scholars and also designers on costume, whose work is available to all of us to read and to all of you, and which is also makes a very rich archive for anyone who also teaches costume. So I picked a random uh, colleague here, Sue, uh, Osmond, uh, this, we cannot play this, but that's what it looks like. So you can access the abstract and you can access the video on the top right. Uh, you click it and then you have Sue presenting and you can hear the paper. And in some cases there are also photographs. And um, similarly, the costume agency, which is part of Critical Costume uh, 2020 exhibition, is also uh, was also uh, prepared to be online. It was not originally conceived to be online, which means that in a very, very quick, short, tight time frame, the curator had to somehow put the work together. Um, so um, she uh, organized the works under themes, thematic areas, such as political agency, material agency, technological agency, and so on. So under each one of these themes or sub-themes, um, you, you have a few presentations of work. Uh, you see videos, clips from different performances, uh, and also photographs. And again, this is um, open. And following the event, there was again a special issue uh, in studies in costume and performance uh, on the topic of costume agency which we uh, co-edited with Barbara Prihodova, the curator of the talks, and we included works from the Critical Costume 2020 um, event. So again, you know, we, we have their people 
um, connecting through this kind of activity. And I really want to stress, this is no kind of masonry. We're very open and we don't want to be the same people again and again. We would like to get new people involved, but of course you also have to know that this is quite a lot of work. So <laughs> to, to edit things, to curate things, to host the event and so on. And here we come to 2022. And the situation was very, while we were thinking, so from 2020, how do we go to 2022? A lot of discussion took place because you can imagine this was the pandemic, but not yet clear, are we post-pandemic, where are we with travel? We had many different ideas on what to do, where to do, how to do things. We even had the idea of combining critical costume with world stage design, which was last year. No, it was not a good idea, it was too much. You know, there were many challenges and we quite early decided that we're gonna keep it online once more, just to clear the grounds and make it possible for people to participate. Keep it basically very, very, um, uh, how can I say, easy give access to all. So we held an, a conference online and it was a very special case um, because we wanted in that way to expand a little bit to other um, continents. So the 2022 Critical Costume was convened by four people in three continents. So uh, Sue Osmond and uh, Maddie Taylor from uh, Australia uh, from uh, NIDA, National Institute of Dramatic Art, and Queensland University of Technology, uh, each of them, and myself in Alto, based in Europe, and uh, uh, Rosani Muniz in Brazil, uh, as uh, part of the Grafias de Sena, the Brazilian Association of Sonographers. And in this case, we also planned the online exhibition from the beginning um, to be curated. Um, as an open access online uh, artistic uh, contribution. And I'd like to take a moment to invite Rosani here with me, and also Istok and Marwa, who were two of the designers of this last edition, so we can go a little bit deeper now into this event. Please come. Um, perhaps um, what um, we could first say is that the whole event, the 2022 event, was uh, a challenge because it was transcontinental and the idea was that the conference part would be running over four days and it was running more or less all the time. So we started with some kind of common time, which was like Europe afternoon and in the US, very early in, in the morning and in, in Australia, really late at night. We started like that, one session, and then Australia went to bed and New Zealand, all the area, and then everybody else continued a little bit, and then uh, the US took over yeah, you can imagine the around the globe. And there were talks all around. And then when it was really late for Europe or then Australia woke up and then Australia took over. And, you know, so we were going around the clock for four days. I think I was the only one who attended everything. And then I was knackered. <laughs> I was like, some sessions, you know, shutting off your screen because you were like half asleep. Or then Australia was having coffee again, you know, to wake up. And, but it was an amazing experience. And I really want to thank my co-conveners. Sue and Maddie are here, and they are chairing the next panel. So um, you will hear more from them. Um, uh, and um, I think it worked. And the, what was amazing was that a lot of the critical caution participants contributed. So they were moderating. They, like you, many of you, I see all the faces um, doing technical support. We had a system of those who present, but also those who support. We didn't have any technician. You know, we did an online conference for four days with our own community supporting each other and rotating. So there were no hierarchies, I think. 
So I, I was also a technician for some sessions, yeah? So don't take it wrong. It was really like everybody. And I think this is part of that kind of um, community we want to have. And Rosani, I'll pass the word to you because I think it's a great opportunity today to talk about the connections that were done also through the exhibition. Yeah. Uh, I don't have, my voice is almost going away after the Brazilian party yesterday. <laughs> But okay, I will try to speak. <laughs> so first of all, thank you, Sophia, Sue, and Maddie for inviting me to be with you as a co-convenor. It was a, an amazing experience. Our meetings was in the most terrible time. So like five o'clock for me, two for her. It was crazy to work with that. But by the other side, it was incredible how the, the conference went because it was very well respected at the time. And it, everybody wrote that in the feedback. And I think it was very interesting because we were, we were so worried about having different times that during each session, everybody respects a lot the other one. So I thought we listened so much the other. It was, so before uh, uh, talking about the exhibition, I think, uh, I need to say to you congratulations because it was really amazing, the conference, with a lot, a lot of participations and, and uh, circulating moderators, so it's a very intense way to, to exchange. Uh, it was my first participation in Critical Costume. Unfortunately, the other ones, I was not possible to go, uh, but I was always following and reading and having the publications. And I think Critical Costume is a very interesting place. As Sophia said, we have some place where we research costume, and I am very active in the Oystad Subcommission sub Costume from Oystad. Uh, but Critical Costume brings the, the university research, so it's, it has a little bit like IFTR, but also has uh, Pratsy people. So when uh, we were talking about having ex an exhibition, it was almost two months, three months. It was not since the beginning we decided later. And it was really like a challenge. I said, can I propose this exhibition? And they said, are you sure? We don't have money. We don't have so much time. And I say, okay, I, I want to do an experiment. So I consider this ex exhibition an experiment. Uh, I learned a lot. We have some things very interesting, some things that they want to kill me because of that. <laughs> because my, feed, my, my background is like a journalist and actress and then costume designer. And I am very much interested in the process of creation, much more than the, in the results. So uh, I, am, I have a lot of curiosity about where do you come from? How do you, are you creating that? Why? What instigates you? What provokes you? Uh, why are you bringing this idea? What do you want to change the world? Or do you want to change something on you or on the other or in the world? So I'm always uh, looking for the, the concepts, but not the concepts of only of the, the costume, on the play, but also the metaphors that like designers we create and sometimes the public doesn't see and doesn't uh, catch. So when I decided to, to do, I, I told them we have almost 40 submissions, but it's impossible to do with so many people. So I was thinking about 10, maybe it's possible, but then it was impossible to choose only 10. We stayed with 14, 14, I think. And the idea was to go uh, to have um, like interviews with them, but uh, we have the, the, the problem of the, the technology problem. So they are people, they are. Now I, now, I'm, now I talk like a journalist, not a designer, so I'm talking about they, not me. <laughs> so, uh, but we are people that we are not accustomed to, the, to be on the stage, from the backstage. So it was very difficult when I asked them, please, do a video talking, uh, telling me about something. And I did some, made some questions. And they are like shy, not you, you are not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I was like the person that went there and see Fruzina, I don't know if she's here, I think she, she cannot come, but she's like, uh, why do you have this blue hair? And said, but why do you want to know that? What does have to, what the connection with my, my work? And I said, let's see. I want to see if there is some connection. So this, it's this kind of thing that I was, uh, you know, pushing from then. And then we went in something from the, the, the childhood and things like that. So it was very interesting. But why they want to kill me after that? Because they, like, uh, they were... I have this smile, <laughs> and then when the person is only with me, and I say, why do you have this blue hair, and why not? And so they start to say everything, and I was recording. And then we have some moments like that in the exhibition, but they didn't notice it before, and they ask, how you didn't told me that this will be part of the exhibition? <laughs> but of course, it's not all of them. Charlotte, for example, is here, and she was like, we were, the first time we saw each other on the screen, it was like we are twins, yeah? And, and, she, and with her it was different because she's accustomed to film, to move, do movies of everything she made. And she's, she documents herself very, in a very well uh, manner. It's like Yuka Yama. Her website has everything about her. And then when I chose her to be in the exhibition, I said, what I will do with this woman? If you want to know something about her, you have everything on her website. So nowadays, as we are developed ourselves, we have our, our websites and etc. we have a lot of information. So we can spend months on the internet uh, looking and seeing what we have. So I want to go beyond, beyond what, what is Yukoyama that I don't see in your website? And that's the exhibition. So you can go to the website and, and see uh, what we did in the, to, to choose the connections is to see the proposals. So we choose the, the designers by the projects they submitted for the conference. So they submitted a costume for some play. And then uh, I was trying to feel what's the connection can I get from here? And then we have this time, these uh, kinds of connections here that uh, that we tried to to but this was like a starting point the 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 play and the work the the, the designer submitted was the starting point we took off this connection and then this with this type of connection we want to to understand and see how they are connecting this with the with their work so you need to go there all the 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 exhibitions are there. And for example, Mawa was talking with me in the internet and we were talking with the video and she was talking and I said, well, no. and your childhood, where you were going? And said, oh, I was going to, this, to the school every day and when I passed by the Giza pyramids, I saw in the bar and said, what? <laughs> oh, when I passed by the Giza pyramids, you were talking like you, it's my garden. When I pass by this tree, you are passing by the Giza pyramids. So it's like her garden. Did you notice that? Did you, did you know how this, uh, how this uh, place uh, interfere in your work, interfere in your creation? Can you talk me, to me about that? And now I want to listen from you. Shall we have a look at, um, we have Marwa's video here. So this is what the page looks like. And we are ready to, to play the video of Marwa. Again, you can have a little, you can read a few words on the abstract. For years I have been looking to do and to process a product with ancient Egyptian heritage and connect, manage side by side to technology. We have to stop taking costumes from book like the same 
way it was for 10,000 years ago. My house located near uh, the Giza uh, uh, pyramids. Every day I remember when I'm going to school, I saw the great pyramids every morning. You can imagine how that impacted me, my life and my childhood. I believe in a museum. I didn't want to be a doctor from the beginning like my mother or an officer like my father. I always wanted to be a, an artist um, and I did it. A turning point in my life um, uh, was uh, the workshop um, I participated uh, with Maria Elena in Quadrinale Prague. Uh, she asked a very weird question. Um, do you think it can move? Do you think it makes sounds? I said, what? <laughs> I raised my hand and asked her, make sound? Do you mean that we can put pills? She said, no. <laughs> but in this this turning uh, 10 days, she saw me how um, my design can move, how my design can make sound, uh, and, and it was really very uh, successful. I want to stop uh, uh, just doing customs. I want my, custom, my customs to move and to react and to love and to interact with the audience. How can I do it? I, I have been searching for a long time. And the workshop with Maria Elena helped me a lot. I'm not only an artist, I'm an assistant professor at Faculty of Fine Arts. I enjoy teaching costume. I enjoy uh, sketching and designing uh, costume designs uh, in uh, theaters and in opera house. For six months, I have uh, changed all my sketches from uh, manual drawing to uh, digital drawing and really helped me a lot. It's like one second you can change colors, you can put patterns and everything. It's a magical way. And uh, from uh, 2015 till now, I didn't stop uh, doing my sketches uh, in digital. I always said to my, stu my student, I'm uh, 37 years old and I'm still learning and I will die learning. We are all one, it was a play talking about uh, the problem of uh, coronavirus, a global problem. So I start thinking with the director how to unite countries into nation with color and pattern in the coat they were uh, wearing it at the start of the play. Then after uh, they got infected with coronavirus, they take off their coat. You can find the costume under uh, start to glow in some places, but when person are able to uh, infect others, all the custom start to glow and look really different. The design is really, and the fabric and the color look different on uh, the stage. So uh, I start to think differently in these uh, designs. Uh, I keep asking myself all the time, why I use this color? Why I use this material? So I keep telling myself, I will never stop learning. I will never stop searching about uh, a new material. Uh, I always keep um, putting the technology and uh, a contemporary way of thinking uh, in my works. All my design, it's not only a, a 2D design in paper. My designs can move, can react, can, uh, can work, can, uh, can, can cry, can, can feel fear. The fabrics, the color, each one of them, I can make them together to produce a feeling that can touch everyone of the audience uh, in the place I have, I have been working in. Something was telling me all the time, I can't, uh, I can't just watch. I have to stop watching that. I have to do something. I have to connect our heritage, our past with our future. That's what I'm aiming to do and uh, uh, in my next working years. Each day I have a different dream, <laughs> uh, but I can say my dream now is produce something, something huge, something amazing, like our ancient Egyptian heritage with modern um, and different uh, ways of technology uh, inside it. I can't 
look. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, uh, hi. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, thank you, Sofia, and thank you, Rosanna, <laughs> for having me here. Uh, thank you for pushing me to do this with you. Uh, first time I, I sent her uh, the first uh, two minutes, I believe, she said, wow, keep on. I, I want you like this. I don't want you in your office uh, with your uh, costume around. I want you to be uh, like yourself uh, in your home with your daughter picture. And, and uh, I want to, um, to feel the connection inside you she really um, brings me brings what what really inside me in this uh, talk I, I first time when I hear about uh, the critical costume uh, I'm a member of uh, Oyster costume group so I got mail uh, to, uh, to uh, so I can take part in critical costume um, I thought it will be formal uh, I, I will make a research and, and when she asked me uh, I got uh, uh, accepted and when she asked me to do video I thought it will be formal I thought I will bring someone professional to photo me but what <laughs> and she she said no keep yourself like like who you are we want we want to see you on the other side of you yes <laughs> she keeps telling me that she, I, yeah, <laughs> you really helped me thank you so much uh, for your your efforts I, I believe um, when we finished, I was in Siena in Morocco, and she said, "We have, we still have one more movie, please." So I, uh, um, I, I said, <laughs> "What?" Um, but but really, uh, it was a very uh, different experience to me. Like uh, I said, uh, my first turning point was uh, uh, when I was with Maria Elena in uh, my workshop here in PQ. First time I came here, uh, 2015. Uh, I still remember that uh, the winner uh, was you. Uh, the, uh, the the project uh, your expression was the other, uh, and was it was really simple. And when you when you got the prize, you said uh, we are. Group of 13. I still remember the rewards. We are a group of 13 people. We we worked uh, for three months or four months. I said, "What? I really couldn't understand anything from uh, the art I saw uh, from Sofia or from any other country." Um, uh, my, my study, my, my way of, uh, of uh, uh, professors that taught me, they taught me uh, costume design and said stage design from books, from very rarely uh, uh, old way. Uh, and I keep uh, 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 saying, I keep uh, fighting, I, and all of that uh, inside me. But when I was in critical custom, really, it was a turning point for me to, to raise to 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 feel to 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 do something. Um, I want to. Um, all was inside my head, but uh, they, they bring it uh, out uh, to do something with my heritage to keep it because because it's it's amazing to keep it to to work on it here now with to be um, a part of this uh, events. Uh, from with these people to be in the same level of uh, technology, why not? All my uh, colleagues back at home, they couldn't understand what I want. They couldn't understand the way uh, the people uh, all around the world work. If you if you can understand what I'm saying, uh, so uh, um, um, my my connection uh, video and and participate. Um, makes me or, or push me to to develop my idea. It was about the connection between. I, I was talking in a very <laughs> deep uh, something. The connection between ancient Egyptian and uh, uh, Cupic uh, uh, heritage. You know, uh, back uh, we have um, the mummies uh, where we can. Uh, we have a special way to bury our mummies. Um, so when we put the, the white sheet uh, around them, we put something uh, over them, so the soul, we saw the soul, can come back to the mummy. After that, the, the Cupid uh, people uh, saw the same way and they draw up beautiful faces uh, called Fayum, faces of Fayum. So they, they saw it like uh, the previous, uh, there was a connection between these two heritage. So I worked in, in this two. I, I create a code, I coded um, um, samples from the ancient Egyptian with the Fayum uh, faces, and I developed it to, to, 
to be uh, to to print in a technology and uh, advanced way. Uh, that that was my point of view. That they they bring it out. How can I I take my heritage, my 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 huge uh, uh, back uh, study and everything? but to use it now, to, to develop it and to reuse it. I, I really had an uh, expression, but you didn't know, I, I had that expression last week with this uh, uh, artwork, and, and, and people back my home, they really love it. I couldn't understand. I thought they, they was uh, saying what or something, but they really loved the, my expression. I, I was really proud that I didn't uh, stop, I didn't fear. I, 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 all the past years, from 2015, first time I came to PQ, and I saw this, uh, uh, not, it's, it wasn't a familiar art to me, to my, <laughs> yes, my study and stuff like this. Like I said, Maria Elena, first time she said, um, what about your dress? Does it move? Does it react? Does it orgasm? Does it uh, love? Does it, she said, and she bring uh, um, two professors. One was uh, uh, from uh, Conservatoire to talk uh, with us about the sound of the dress. And his first time, he, he told me how to focalize the sound. I said, what? <laughs> I'm a costume designer. I couldn't understand. And another one uh, was a, a professor from uh, uh, Palais uh, uh, Institute, and his, he developed with us, all of us. I believe uh, some of you was with me in the same workshop, if you remember. I, I saw you. Um, and, and he developed with me the walk of the uh, dress. And, and in the day of the um, uh, the exhibition, it was in Charlie's Bridge. For four hours, we have to make a runway with our costumes. And I bring someone from Borland, I believe she's my friend, and she was going to dress her. Maria Elena said, no, you will dress your dress. I said, no, they will kill me back home if I was a model. She said, no way, you are the only one who feels and, and know how this dress react. And, and by then I know how, how I, 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 I thought that I have uh, missing a lot of uh, ideas. I, I have missing a lot, uh, a lot of, a lot of connection between me and my study and, and what all of you doing and, and world. From then, from 2015, I've been working on myself to connect me <laughs> and, and yes, and uh, what, that's what I'm doing with my friends, I mean, with my students now. I, I bring them to the world, I show them every time I came here, I show them all uh, the concepts, the expressions and everything. And, so. and such a good example of the connections between PQ and Critical costume and back and forth and what you learn and what you bring from one space to another. I think we can also have a look at Istok's uh, work and then we have a couple of questions for both of you. Um, so Istok was one of the other uh, presenters uh, in um, Critical Costume 2022 with a project that involved technology, but I think quite low-tech technology in a way. Uh, it's best to listen to his talk first, so we could play the video, the second video. If the costume can be performance light, if is it possible not to not to be needing the exterior light so that the performer can be seen. Usually forget, for me, it's not the most important thing of the costume design or the costume, it's not the character or the text, it's actually the light. If there is no light, no one can see the costume. And I'm always interesting how costume connects um, to, to the space, not just to the, the, the body of the performer. So maybe I'm interested in extensions or connection, like sound designer just does sound, um, light designer just does light. But in this case, I was the light designer of the costumes, but at the same time, I was the light designer of all the performance because outside the light of the costume, there is no stage light in the space because we didn't need it because mm -hmm. the costume is the light. So in this case, 
I was also doing the work or the connection to the work of the light designer. And I hope this will be like in the future more because it will be more interdisciplinary. During the pandemic lockdown, I made several custom prototypes embedded with sensors, microprocessors and LEDs. They were conceived as hybrids between two scenographic elements, material garment and immaterial light and were based on a simple idea of what would happen if performers could glow on their own and not depend on the help of the technician or stage with rigged lighting. My bedroom experimentation culminated in a stage production called LED, a 30-minute physical theater piece where costumes are the central element. They determine what performers and spectators see and how and when they see it. Costumes emit enough light for them to be able to dance and be seen from 3 to 6 meter distance. Except at the beginning and the end, light is controlled by performers and produced live by software and microcontrollers embedded on the chest of the costume. By moving through dark emptiness, Moitza and Dina transform their appearance from being nearly invisible through dotty white specters to tangible multicolor atmospheres. They go through five different costume changes, peeling layers like an onion. First taking off the shared black membrane, then the second black impersonal overalls, the third taking off the skin tone leotards, the fourth their naked bodies, and the fifth layer putting on their own clothes for the curtain call. Performers can create basic figures and postures, but they can't express subtle gestures, show personal characteristics or emotions, because their garments have no cavities, no sexual distinction, no face, no eyes, no ears or fingers. The light that costumes project from inside out gives the audience more information about the surrounding space than about the performers. LED is my research into costumes perception. Embodied light that is moving in unison with the wearers continually focuses the attention on costumes, making spectators perceive everything that happens through the eyes and bodies of the performers. Illuminous skins transform the environment and broadcast wearers' inner thoughts and feelings. The light they project immerses performers' space and spectators in distinct, effective atmospheres. Costumes can wirelessly communicate with other costumes, scenery and audience without the need for fixed lighting, wall sockets or light technicians, forming what Chris Salter calls a swarm-based scenography. Performers and interactive systems are equal partners. Wearable electronics supports performers' new choreographic skills and reinforces their expressivity. It grants them the power to change the costume aspect at will, in real time. Luminous skins take spectators on an experiential journey. They enrich their understanding of performances technique, augment the awareness of their own bodies and trigger their haptic vision and kinesthetic empathy. Electronics and prototyping provide me the costume designer with advanced meaning-making tools, an opportunity to break with the conventional theatrical hierarchy by weaving a web of new relationships between different material and immaterial elements like body, costume, movement, light, sound, space and time. Designing costumes as a sequence of actions, impressions and effects offers a fresh approach to costumographic dramaturgy. Are you emotional? Are you emotional? I've seen you. <laughs> This talk was a different case because it's uh, it's it's learning, yeah. Uh, because he sent a, a video explaining his own work. Uh, Fifty minutes? How many? What? Seven? Eight? How no, twelve. No, it was a big one. A big one. Yeah, it was like fifteen minutes. No, then, no, it wasn't. And then I said, <laughs> half an like half an hour. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then. I need to interview him again and then put everything in five minutes. But we never succeed on being again together. So I got the, f the first uh, meeting and he was surprised. My God, you record that Zoom. I didn't. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, um, I thought that we had to make the video and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that I would be the part of the video yeah. in a close-up. No, with, without my makeup and without the rehearsal. So it, it, was, it really was a trap. 
but who can blame her? I said when she, she asked me if I authorize this, I said, of course. <laughs> but seeing this on big screen, it's a little bit. Um, so I guess uh, me and Marva are here just to show the, the range of the critical costumes because we come from the, maybe from two peripheral countries from the costume map. So this is the interesting choice. Costume map. And, and the, the, the show the juxtaposition of the ancient heritage and maybe working with electronics. So that, that's also interesting. So I wanted to talk about this a little bit, not about my video because it's... <laughs> in, in critical costume, but also in noise that we often say about the challenges of, uh, for example, language, then when it comes to international events or conferences, some people, especially designers, sometimes feel overwhelmed or like shy or scared. Um, particularly if uh, English is not our native language. And I think we, we try through these um, alternative formats of presentation to somehow, uh, first of all, express through the art <laughs> and the design, and also to find different ways to talk. And this kind of handicraft uh, that came out of these videos, I hopefully uh, also <laughs> um, gives that kind of personal feeling uh, of course, it's, it's great to talk about the content. So we are now jumping between frame and content, and we can talk a little bit about the work. Istok, if you want to tell us. Uh, of course, you already said a few things about connections that your work creates. Would you like to talk a little bit more about your motivation on this project? Where did it come from? You're a tradition. No, come on. <laughs> Imagine the interview. It is not the questions you sent us yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. No, another How question. How did it start? No? Another question. Okay, go ahead. My list. <laughs> okay. Well, he's also my supervisee, yeah. so it's very difficult. <laughs> No, he was, he was surprised when I arrived with the video because what happened when we decided that, okay, Rosani, you can do the exhibition. Thank you for trusting in my <laughs> crazy idea. Because if we had very... Uh, 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 oh, the words. Very little moment, only two months. And, uh, and we, we need to deal with the language. So I am also not a native, native English speaker. So it was, and when I decided, when I proposed that, I didn't remember that. I said, okay, let's do. And then I started. It's very, it was very difficult to understand what everything she was talking about. So I, I needed to listen, to listen, and then uh, other one. And then I didn't notice uh, that some of them didn't also speak English or speak only German. And then I don't speak German, so it was a little um, a mess, really. So I think I, what I, I want to tell here, I don't uh, to say here, and I don't know what you want to ask for Sophia about the Critical Costume Conference and everything. And I think she wants also to talk about the next one. But if if I have something that I want to learn here, learn or listen here, is how we can. Uh, continue experimenting and provoking uh, to go beyond ourselves as designers and to understand and bring these uh, ideas and these sto his stories. And maybe, of course, this I, I called that an experiment because we didn't have money, we didn't have time, we didn't have technology. Uh, I, uh, later, I paid for the, the edition, but uh, because it needs to be at least... The editing of the videos. Yeah, the yeah. videos. But uh, I want to know how we can we uh, exhibit costumes? How can we know uh, more about costumes? So his project, we, we are not talking about his project now, but how can we know more about this, his lighting ideas, knowing more about him? I am not satisfied because we didn't continue, so we need to do a second exhibition with you. Yeah. When? <laughs> I will interview you. <laughs> Wait for me. Look, 
um, there is a question on the screen, which is one of the questions um, you knew. <laughs> I don't see it. So how does costume create connections for you? You already talked about that a little bit in the video. Um, well, at the moment, it's the part of my uh, PhD, so I'm mainly interested in technology and electronics. But if you're asking me how does it create connections generally or the critical cost I think you can, you can talk a little bit about this project. No, because is, is it, has, the video explained that. You think it's explained. The, uh, Istok has, uh, it, is, you work a lot as a designer in all kinds of performance, yes. in puppetry, in yeah. children's yeah. theater. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, so for me, um, it's more like the connection to the scenographic part. I personally made the uh, costumographic turn decades ago, so my work is, is not that actor based or text based because I'm like specialized in puppetry or particularly in costumes for puppets or for non-dramatic theater. So I come from here. So I, I'm working on breaking the, the borders between what is costume object, what is the performer's body, what can be puppet, prop, scenography, now even light. So mm -hmm. at the moment, this is my main interest. And breaking down the, the hierarchies between like different artistic teams or technical teams mm -hmm. and interdisciplinarity. Mm. Yeah, amazing you, things, yeah. yeah. You, you used also the term uh, cosmographic. And we have talked about this before, and there's also dialogue with um, Lorraine from the UK, Smith, who um, also used costumography in her work. Mm -hmm. um, in your case, I understand it comes from Slovenian. It's a word yes, to say Yes, because I designer. am a costumographer. This is my profession, because mm. we don't have the term costume design. It's costumographia. Costumography. So... Which I is great, and we don't have it in Greek. Understand it a little bit, but just the last day, I don't know if it's the Lorraine definition, but someone composed like costumography, like the costume plus scenography. Mm -hmm. So it's another definition which is also interesting. I think Lorraine but actually combined costume and choreography, choreography, because she comes from a choreography background, yeah. and she used the so term... So maybe it's not Lorraine, maybe it's somebody else that al already is talking about the costumography uh -huh. from another point of view. But mine is like, I'm like costume designer, like from the practical part, but the graphy for me is like the theory part or like talking or explaining about costumography because after 25 years of being the practitioner, I started with the theory and, and academia. I started very late, so I joined the Critical Costume in 2018. It was like the start for me. Yes, and you it have is been... When, when I yeah. actually made this switch, oh, yes, I am a costume designer and a costume grapher, so I am a costumographer. So it is perfect for me, like the Slovenian name, costumography. I, I, I thought that in other Slavic language is similar, but the Simona told me that for example, yeah. in Czech, it is not. So yeah. it looks like that is something in Croatia, Serbia, and Slovenia. I'm not sure mm. if any other countries. This is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's um, also interesting how a term comes or is used in one language and how it can be translated into something slightly different in another language. We have the same issue with scenography, skinografia in Greek, and how it, what it means in the Anglophone world in English. And I think this is also another case. And it, 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 it shows how valid this kind of discussion is, how thoughts, how words, and um, uh, the art itself connect, and what kind of uh, terminology we use or what kind of termin new terminology do we build in order to communicate the multiple dimensions of costume, in a way, I think. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned about c coming to Critical Costume in 2018, and you were also in 2020 yeah. and 2022 yeah, in different roles. Yeah. Would you Try. like something about your own trajectory? 
Um, yes, it's interesting because I was trying like different formats of presentation. Mm. So I, I, I think I did two flash talks. Yeah. And the second already was the video because it had to be online and the yeah. third one like more professional video. So it's interesting because I'm learning doing videos, which I never thought that I would have to do. <laughs> Even less that I would be the part of the video. <laughs> because I choose to be a costume designer precisely because I wanted to be the man behind the scenes, <laughs> not on the big screen. Um, so um, for me, it was like in 2018, I was already 47 years old and it was like I finally find, found the, my, my way home. It was like finally finding the community that, that speaks the same language. Oh. So everybody oh. should join. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to stick with it since then. I think this is a common a feeling we share, many of us. I see many of yeah. you nodding. Um, we also have another question, which I have sent to you, which is, um, <laughs> which is a um, double question uh, to, to both of you to, to tell us. Um, the first part is what unexpected or exciting connections, or maybe boring also, have you made through Critical Costume? Like, what is? You already mentioned the community. Is Doc and or where might some of these ideas take you in the future? Is there anything you, you're taking with you from your own experience? Maybe Marwa, would you like to say something? Yes, um, I speak a lot actually, I said everything. So, um, I believe um, critical costume um, take me from the past to the future for my project. Um, um, with your help, uh, you bring what inside me, what I was thinking, just um, to be words and research and project. And I did a successful one back home, so thank you. Um, um, what I, I'm thinking it, uh, I should do in the next level when I, I definitely I will be part of the coming critical costume. Um, I, I think I will um, do it in a professional way. I, I will bring my, I, w I will keep uh, my heritage and I will bring it uh, with me to the future sh through your uh, um, critical custom. Um, 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 I, I'm, I'm really uh, exciting and emotional to be part of this um, um, designers that I saw their work through uh, our online uh, presentations. And it was really um, um, uh, different. I, I didn't see any of this work uh, any other places. Like uh, I, I still remember uh, there was one project that was about the red dress, if you remember, uh, the dress that uh, we, every woman has in, uh, in her closet, the red one, and she made an exhibition with it uh, outside. It was, wow, <laughs> it, it, it has a lot of, um, you all should go online and see all the other uh, projects. It's only not uh, more uh, different than both of us and, and um, really they did a great job, uh, you and, uh, and Simona also and uh, yes, everyone. It, um, um, I was so excited that I, I got accepted. Uh, um, let me know if, if it's right. It was like 15 people uh, participate, right? Yeah. And you choose 14. Sorry? You choose 14 more, um, uh, artists. Yeah. I said, wow. <laughs> I'm the one of the 14 ones. I, I, I couldn't imagine. I, I was really excited to be part of this uh, 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 number. And um, um, I said to myself, um, uh, finally, I'm part of this. <laughs> so thank you so much. Is Doc? Um, first and foremost, meeting you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I, sh I was lucky that she accepted to be my PhD supervisor. So it is like, mm -hmm. and everybody else that, that, that is like organizing all those conferences which I know is a lot of work and you don't have the budget so it's like no. mostly very very dedicated brave strong women doing this 
with very little resources and uh, the community is growing and uh, the quality is growing. So it's this. And um, thanks to Critical Costume, I also met some Slovenian costume designers that I otherwise wouldn't meet, but they live in my city. <laughs> but it was thanks to critical costumes and knowing them around the world, otherwise I wouldn't know about them. <laughs> yeah, and you have worked together after that with Tiasha. And Mateja. And Mateja, yes, we have some more. And Tina. Okay, many. <laughs> So maybe we can open for the questions? Uh, I think what we can think? conclude a little bit by talking about um, where we are now and where we're going in the future, because we would like to leave a little bit of time for discussion with you. And because there are so many people who have been part of this network, you might like to say something. So, yeah, and I'll, I'll conclude a little bit the info session on our side, and then we can have a little dialogue. So, um, uh, the question of how does costume create connections uh, was really uh, what um, everybody answered in the conference. And I'm not going to go through the list. <laughs> you can take a photo. I know everybody takes photos. Uh, but I'll just pick a few keywords about culture, production contexts, dramaturgies, materiality as a connective medium, body and material, collaboration and collaborative connections, um, and again, bodies, materials, and environments, social, political connections to and ideas, and audiences and costume, or spaces and costume, and of course, theory and practice, which is in the key um, aims of critical costume yeah. in general, that we always discuss and put the two together. Um, critical costume has always been connected to the PQ, which I said in the beginning, with, through the curated panels we have had also this year. Uh, and one, oops, and one, sorry, new thing um, is that Critical Costume has created an official partnership with the PQ now, since this edition, uh, as part of its knowledge exchange platform. And if you're here on the 17th of June, next Saturday, we will have a panel with the other partners of the knowledge exchange platform, for example, Ecosonography, that you know. And of course, we already talked about how Critical Costume and the Oyster Subcommission has been, have been like really connecting. And uh, there were always uh, some activities from Critical Costume members uh, in world stage design. Um, I take the opportunity to invite you to the meeting of the Oyster Costume Subcommission on the 15th of June, the coming week, at 10 o'clock in Villa Vanitze. If uh, you want to know more about it, you can contact any of us, or Rosani or myself. Um, that meeting is not only for Oystad members, a part of it is open to all, because we also, that community wants to get to know more people. And a couple of words on the future. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> She's the performer. Um, one thing, we're not yet at the conference, so one thing is that we are preparing a special issue again. It's under preparation at the moment. So in December, there will be a new studies in costume and performance issue on costume connections. It is edited by the four of us, the conveners of the last uh, event, and um, it's in progress. So, you know, we hope you will follow that. And that's the next event. Yeah. <laughs> we should have one of these film backgrounds because the next event will focus also on film and television. So we're going to LA and it's the first time that Critical Costume goes somewhere outside Europe in a physical way. Um, um, the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA, will be the host institution, and especially Professor Deborah Landis. You might know Deborah Landis from her books on film costume, film craft, and dress, and all. She has done lots of great books, um, talking 
especially on, on, on costume in the industry uh, of the um, global industry, which is Hollywood-based. She also curated the Hollywood uh, costume exhibition. Um, the topic or the title she gave is God Fiction, Whatever the Medium, Costume is a Character. And the event is not only about film. Yeah, you will see in the call for papers that will be announced very soon that there are open doors to different approaches to costume. We will talk about medium, we'll talk about formats of presentation, but also about much more. Um, um, Deborah Landis is also chair at the David Copley Center for Costume Design. It's a small center in UCLA, uh, which, um, uh, let's say, is the core of her work there. Um, and uh, the dates, as you see, is 6th to 9th of March uh, 2024. Uh, and what is really special is that the first three days are mainly dedicated to the conference activities. And there will be uh, a small exhibition in a gallery space. And we are discussing uh, on possibly having it in a hybrid way. So some designers might not actually need to go there, but there will be an online presence to facilitate the, uh, those who might not be able to travel. And on the 9th of March, which is the last day, um, there will be um, a special event that the Copley Center has been organizing for like more than 30 times uh, already. The sketch to screen. You might have heard about it. It's an event. It's a panel where Deborah um, moderates a discussion with all the um, Academy Award nominated costume designers, because the 10th of March is the Oscars day. So we will be there the week before the Oscars, which I think is quite special. Um, of course, we are a very uh, clandestine and anarchic community, but if we can also have a bit of Oscar glamour for a few days. Um, so there are a few things organized. We might have a special reception. We are planning a private viewing of the Oscars in a special Academy uh, hall. Um, and we included the event, the sketch to screen, as part of the conference program, so that those of you who need to explain why you're away, you can be there for the whole event. And we will be really glad to find ways to support, not financially, we don't have money, but by inviting in different ways, different people to, to, to collaborate. And there is, um, uh, I, I can already like pre-announce that the deadline for the call for participation will be the 1st of September this year because of course it's quite tight time-wise, so we need to perform, to do all the process and have a peer review for the academic papers because the academic side is very serious. There are many reviewers uh, giving feedback. And there is already an email, Critical Costume 2024, uh, but don't ask them anything yet, it's too early, but keep it there. Um, uh, someone assisting Deborah is answering this. And of course, for any kind of information, you can contact us and me directly, uh, oops, uh, through this info uh, address. And what we really hope is to anyone who's interested in costume and does not f yet feel connected, to get connected with us. So please write me and there is a long mailing list of people interested in costume and costume designers. I think this is um, what I wanted to say. Um, please visit the online exhibition and the website. And I'm actually really proud because the last event had a small fee uh, which mainly went to the website. We redesigned it. It has a rich archive and a little bit to the editing of the videos. And, um, and um, it's open for you to, to, you know, to explore to explore using your teaching and also in your research. It's also quite good material for research. So I leave it there for everybody who would like to contact us. And we have a few minutes for discussion, questions or anything you want to share with us. Thank you.
Yeah. It's, it's great if we just explain everything so well, there's no question. <laughs> but uh, if there's no question, I can give the word to some of you. Yeah, up there. Upstairs. She needs to run. <laughs> it's the last row. Hi, good morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, when I saw the work of the actors with the, the lit up costumes, I wanted to know more about how the actor training happened so that they could operate those uh, devices. It's for you, it's one. for you. <laughs> it's not on my list. <laughs> I'm sorry, we didn't plan that, sorry. <laughs> uh, can we talk about this later? We can. No. Yes, but I didn't hear the question. Should I repeat? The actors, especially for moving with the for moving the costume of the um, of the lights. I'm not a trainer for for actors. I'm a costume designer. But I was lucky that the the performers are um, they studied contemporary dance. Um, they studied new circus. They do acro yoga, and they are couple in real life. So it was them that they made all the choreography. So it is maybe it is a question for them. But for me, it was like I wanted to try if the dancers actually can, can dance in pitch dark. And my conclusion is that they can, because they, they had two layers of, of, of black fabric over their faces in, in pitch dark and they, they manage without any external guidance of, of anything. I don't know how, but, but it can be done because I was reading articles of others who were trying this and they were saying that they always need some light even if it's, I don't know, black light or something on the stage so they don't disorientate. But my two performers managed to, to train themselves and they Did you said give they, them the ready costume or did you have half made prototypes? Did you have time to uh, improvise? You want to say a little more about that? Can you repeat the question? Did you just give them a ready costume and you told them just do what you feel you can do with it? Um, or did they participate Yes, earlier? in a way, yes. I was like a bad guy because I wanted to see if they can, but. I know them from before, so I... I they were not offended. We had some clashes along the way because the problem was that they didn't actually... They couldn't understand how the, the, the light on the body was. They couldn't embody that light for a long time. So, like, one week before the, the premiere, they also said that they don't want to do this with costumes because they thought that the same thing could be done without it because they were the ones that made all the choreography themselves and it takes a lot of time for them to actually embody this. Mm. But now I hope they finally understand it. <laughs> Maybe um, you could follow up with them, what yes, they think Yes, but now. I, I was going through stages. It was like first prototypes and then tweaking the, 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 the pattern of the costume, the, how the LEDs were sewn in and all the programming, everything. It was tweaked along the way. Yeah. It was like months and months of, of first workshop and then rehearsals. And it's still not finished, the project. It, has many levels and it will con continue, hopefully with the same performers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Isdok. Another question there. Hi, my name is Sabrina Ernstein. I'm a costume designer and technician. Um, you mentioned, I think, Ma, in your um, talk about hierarchies, and I was wondering, um, and this is a question for any of you who want to speak on it, what does it mean to break hierarchies in costume? I think we need to have another conference on that. <laughs> it's a topic that comes back all the time, no? Does someone else? 
I can start, someone can continue. It seems what we learn from these global encounters is that there are different ways to work. So um, there are certain power hierarchies in our work, um, primarily that between director and creative team sometimes, um, or between director and performers, uh, or even in our costume shop, and actually Sue has a very nice um, um, book chapter on the power and hierarchies and worries and tensions in the fitting room, where, for example, the costume designer might actually have a power connection to the maker or to the assistant of the makers. Uh, or the performer, if it's some kind of very well-known actor, might have a power hierarchy, power position in relation even to the designer, especially if it's a young designer who might be really nervous. So this can be one example. And I, was, I started saying that these global encounters show us that there are many different ways to work. Um, being in Finland, I see a lot how um, there is a very strong tradition, and this comes also from culture uh, of a non-hierarchical and very equal approach uh, um, in who people are. So people are people. Like the the, the prime minister uh, who who arrives late does not go to a special chair, but has to sit on the side because he's late. Yeah, there's this kind of of of, of community and social society, and. Um, and this is very much also in, in the work, um, so where uh, people talk, share the ideas in a very, let's say, um, equal manner, and then everybody's ideas are brought into the production, which is very different compared to a, another place. It, I now put an example of a country. It might be, not be so. It might be an example of context. If it's high budget, low budget, you sometimes see experimental productions being maybe more uh, collective, whereas in the big productions where there's a lot of responsibility and stress, it might not be so. But it might also be a character issue. Even in a small production, you might have someone who exercises like authority to the collaborators. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, and uh, Rosani, yeah. you can also. It depends on the project also, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm working, for example, for four years already with a pantomime group. It's an experimental work and we are working collectively, creating it and creating, like, I, I need to understand what will be the real costume or what will be the imaginary costume. So uh, why the imaginary? Because they are pantomimes and not everything needs to be real. So uh, it's, uh, we are researching and sometimes I create something that they said, okay, this is amazing, but I want to show to the public it is, but not with this materiality. So how can I create? And they, they create the materiality without the materiality. So we create something <laughs> in a lot of ways. Oh my God, so confused, sorry. <laughs> and the reason why I say about global encounters is that these things are different in different contexts, different production frames, and so on. Yeah. We have two minutes left. Um, any, any other question? And of course, we can continue the discussions or comment. Yeah. This is, yeah. Last. Yeah, sorry, I don't think the answer is gonna be in two minutes, I know. Um, and this might be like the oldest question ever, but like I'm recently interested in that. And that is uh, like the relation of costume design from your perspective to scenic design and how, like what is from your perspectives as costume designer is the most important part that you relate your costumes to the set and how does the set change the way you think about the costume? What do you think the role is there? And I'm sorry, again, that it's a big question for like two minutes. I can say something short, which I, share, I said at the previous PQ, where the topic was costume as scenography, question mark. Yeah, I said, at least my perspective, because I, I started as a, as a set designer, and for many years I was looking at costume from outside, like as costume as part of the scenographic, like overall design. And then when I started going deeper into costume, deeper and deeper, I felt like looking at costume 
from inside, <laughs> from within the body, which I learned more and more by working with uh, performers and also meeting people like Maria Elena because she's a performer herself and costume designer. And that gives a very different approach. So this could be one way from within and in, or from outside. That's like, or how can we blend this? But as you said, it's a very long discussion. And um, again, it's about collaboration, about possible power structures, and there's a lot to say, I think. And I, um, perhaps we conclude here. We can discuss more um, outside. And we can take some of these as topics for future events, actually. Yes. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you.